In this video, I'm going to talk about acute pancreatitis. It is the reversible pancreatic parenchymal damage due to an acute inflammatory process going on in the pancreas. These are the few causes of acute pancreatitis, and the mnemonic to remember it is I get smashed. I is for idiopathic, other causes include gallstones, ethanol or alcohol, trauma, scorpion sting, mumps or other infections like varilla zoster virus, cytomegalovirus, parasitic infections. A is for autoimmune, like disorders, for example, Sjogren's syndrome or systemic lupus erythematosus. Steroids can also cause acute pancreatitis. Metabolic disease like hypercalcemia or hypertriglyceridemia, ERCP, and also drugs like NSAIDs, diuretics. For the pathophysiology of acute pancreatitis, some studies say that it is due to unregulated activation of the trypsin inside the pancreatic acina cells. So this trypsin will activate the proenzymes, causing auto digestion of the pancreatic acina cells and there will be local inflammatory response, causing acute pancreatitis. Another etiology of pancreatitis is gallstone, which is very commonly seen. So when there is gallstone formation, it might go into the uh, common bowel duct and then obstruct the pancreatic duct, causing interstitial edema. And when there is edema, it will impair the blood flow to the pancreatic cells, causing ischemic cell injury. So when there is ischemic cell injury, Activation of proenzyme will occur and this also leads to destruction of the pancreatic acina cells causing acute pancreatitis. So this one we will call it as ghost on pancreatitis. So how do patients usually present when they have acute pancreatitis? So some of the features include they will present with acute and constant epigastric pain which is classically described as a boring sensation that radiates to the back the patient is unable to get comfortable when they are lying supine and their pain will be relieved by sitting up and leaning forward. So this is a characteristic of acute pancreatitis. Other features include nausea and vomiting as well. So what about the signs that we can look for? On inspection, we should take note of any abdominal distension and also look out for signs of hemorrhagic pancreatitis like Coolen sign and Gray Turner sign. For patient, we expect to find epigastric tenderness and also we have to look out for signs of peritonism, for example, rebound tenderness, guarding and rigidity. So, Coolen's sign is when there is periumbilical ecchymosis. So, this is a picture of the Coolen sign. Whereas Gray Turner's sign is when there is flank ecchymosis. This picture shows gray turner sign where there is bruising at the flank area. So the investigations that we can do if we are suspecting for acute pancreatitis include blood investigation and imaging. So for blood investigation, full blood count, we expect to see um, there might be elevated white cell count, which will be associated with worse prognosis. We should also take the renal profile or bills on creatinine to check for any electrolyte imbalance because sometimes the patient might have vomiting and there might be electrolyte imbalance. Liver function tests to look out for the liver enzymes and also albumin level. Serum amylase and lipase is very significant to diagnose acute pancreatitis. So serum amylase, it is significant when the level increase more than three times the normal upper limit. Calcium, magnesium, and phosphate, and also fasting lipid profile. This is to look out for the risk factors of acute pancreatitis, like hypercalcemia and hyperlipidemia. For imaging, we can do erect chest X-ray to look out for any gas gas under the diaphragm because we want to rule out perforated peptic ulcer. This is for differential diagnosis, and other imaging includes supine abdominal X-ray which may show the sentinel loop sign, which is the dilated proximal jejunal loop near the pancreas. Or another sign that we can look out for is the colon cut-off sign, where there is distended colon from the ascending to mid transverse colon with no A at the distal part. This is due to localized ileus secondary to inflammation around the pancreas.
On abdominal x-ray, we can also see for any presence of calcifications within the pancreas, where if that is present, it may indicate chronic pancreatitis. Other imaging includes CECT of the abdomen. It is very useful in confirming diagnosis of pancreatitis. Okay. Ransom's criteria is commonly used in um, diagnosing the pancreatitis. Okay, so next slide is Ransom's criteria. It is used to prognosticate the mortality of the patient according to the score. So these are the few criteria we look out for. The age, white blood cell, serum AST level, serum LDH level, blood glucose, serum calcium, hematocrit 4, and it is significant if it is more than 10%, PaO2, blood urea, nitrogen, base deficit, and sequestration of fluids. So any patient with a score of 3 and above is considered to have severe pancreatitis. So how do we manage patients with acute pancreatitis? First, we have to give intravenous fluid resuscitation if needed. And after that, we will have to monitor the vital signs after resuscitating. We can monitor the arterial blood gas analysis, the calcium levels, vital signs, and so on. We also ask the patient to kneel by mouth with nutritional support. So kneel by mouth means um, to give the gastric rest. So it may include gastric decompression with nasal gastric tube if there is persistent vomiting or intestinal obstruction caused by the ileus. If, okay. Other than that, if the patient is complaining of the epigastric pain, we can give analgesia. However, take note to don't give NSAIDs as they can worsen the pancreatitis and also cause renal failure because there is already decreased renal perfusion in acute pancreatitis. On the other hand, we can give opioid analgesics like tramadol or pepidine. We also have to correct the electrolyte imbalance if the abuse and creatinine shows electrolyte imbalance, and then also provide support for organ failure. Let's take a look at the complications of acute pancreatitis. It can be divided into local or systemic complications. For local complications, there is pancreatic abscess, pancreatic pseudosis, and pancreatic necrosis. Whereas for systemic complications, there is peritoneal sepsis, pancreatic ascites, when there is massive accumulation of pancreatic fluid in the peritoneum, pleural effusion may occur, and also other complications like multiple organ failure involving the lungs, the kidney, and also hypocalcemia might occur as well. So that's all for my video. Thank you.